from the hamburger train, right? What's up guys, how you doing tonight? You having fun? Hanging out? Cool, cool. Me too, me too. We are going to take a look at the Zephyrus and mainly it's going to be the RBA base, uh, coil, whatever you want to call it, the RBA coil on it. Um, I pretty much ran this tank as an RTA most of the time. Um, the factory coils work good on mine, they, they wicked good. Uh, I just, I don't know why I didn't get into the factory coils, I think I just messed with the the RBA so much I just didn't I ran the cools like the first two days I had it put my build in there ran my build and last week I actually recorded this video and it got all jacked up so I'm redoing the video now and my Wi-Fi has been jacked up so hopefully it all works out this time again I swear I haven't had one damn issue knock on wood I haven't had one issue with my Wi-Fi in years and I decided to do videos and I'm, I'm having Wi-Fi issues mm, excuse me left and right I got some new lighting if you guys haven't noticed I'm not yellow looking I guess hopefully you guys like the new lighting I think it makes me look a whole lot better um, if that's possible but anyways we'll get down and dirty with the Zephyrus here and we'll look at it and I'll show you guys how I wick it I know a lot of people's had issues with it leaking and there's a, there's a certain little way I do my cotton. It's really, it's nothing different anybody else doesn't do, but it's more or less the angle on how I square it up and then cut it. I cut it up at an angle, and that way it kind of comes down at a point. I put the points down in the channel. Kind of use the points that go down in the channel to start the wicking process and everything else up top. It's kind of like a half uh, pancake wicking if you guys know what that is but it's about half of that so half the cotton's up top to catch that wicking coming up if I just if I just fold it all down it I would I would get some uh, not really dry hits but I'd get some wicking issues I'd have to prime it a little bit It'd just get weak juice taste you know it never really got burnt and I'm sure if I was careless and was just vaping away I would have got a burnt hit but uh, anywho We'll go down, I'll give you guys all the specs, and I got it tore apart, I got it cleaned up, it's sitting over here, and uh, we'll get down and dirty with it, and I'll show it to you guys, and um, we'll go from there. See you guys here in a minute. Alright guys, we're down and dirty here with the Zephyrus. Um, this is the packaging it came in. Kind of standard issue. It's nice though. I mean, I, I definitely like it. It gives you a good description, the breakdown of all the parts and pieces that it comes with gives you good specifications of everything and um, gives you a website you can get it from the company unification of design UD technologies in here this is where you had your your tank or your extra uh, Pyrex glass which is Pyrex one thing that sucks about this thing is the edges of the paper is sticky so when your glass is in there actually I wiped this one off it had sticky shit all over it that's where the extra glass went. There's actually one extra teeny tiny screw that was on the RBA. One of these little teeny tiny screws, you get one extra. I would have liked to have seen more extra screws because these things are damn near obsolete. They gotta be the only company in the world that's using screws this little. I'll show them to you. I mean, they're teeny tiny. And of course it isn't gonna focus, but here it is. They're little, man. So let me measure one for a second. It's got to be a millimeter. It's one 1.75 millimeter in diameter at the top of it. So I mean, you gotta have the littlest Phillips screw you ever seen in your life to fit in there. The air holes on on this are three millimeter. There's four of them. It's a lot of airflow. I've I've had good luck. Peak in, insulator all the way up through the positive, and uh, I left my coils in there. I've put three different builds on this. The, when I first got it, I put a twisted build on it. I put, a, I think I put it on a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver. I looked at it. I lined it all up. I was like, hell yeah, this is going to work. I'm definitely going to try this. And put it all together. Uh, put it on the base. Heated them up. Checked for hot spots. Was good to go. Went to put the, the barrel on. And the barrel right on the inside of them screws, it indents a little bit. Could not get it over my coils. I was pissed. I was so pissed because the coils were so nice. I just put standard coils in here. 
There's a peak insulator down there in the bottom. Now with this pin, this pin does move. You can see it protrude right there. Um, you know, with this RBA base, this will not move whatsoever. It will not. Now on the regular coil, that center can move a little bit. But when I put my RBA base, RBA coil, whatever you want to call it, when I put it in there, it pushes my center pin out a lot. Like I have ran this on a hybrid, but that's mine and I know what to look for and I'm taking the risk. But if yours sticks out and protrudes, um, you know, it worked for mine. But yours, you know, manufacturing definitely have errors. So not all of them are probably gonna be like that. There are gonna be some give and take in their uh, manufacturing. Here's the other Pyrex glass, here's the barrel. Kind of show you how that goes on. But yeah, it's definitely got an indention. I would say it's like maybe a quarter millimeter. It's not much, but if you look at the barrel, you think, well, I'll put my coils right to the edge of this diameter, which is, uh, what is the diameter of this? 12 millimeters, that's only 12 millimeters. So I had my coils out to the outside of that edge, went to put this on, couldn't thread it on. Couldn't thread it on, pulled it off, my coil was all jacked up. So it was rubbing pretty bad. I got this one pretty nice, and it's a one point, or a .18 ohm build in here. And it <laughs> that's been my preferred vape with this, man. It's been really nice. So that's the base there. I do like the airflow control ring, how it comes off so you can clean it. But at times, if you ever have a mod or anything that it doesn't set flush on, this thing will flop down like that, you know? And that drives me crazy. You look down and your airflow control ring's hanging off like that. Gets all juicy and it makes it a little bit more slippier. I mean, it's not too bad right now. It's got a nice tight feel, good, good give and take with that. It says UD 2015 on the bottom. It's the year, not the serial number. And uh, with this airflow on the bottom, it's dual airflow. It's 12 millimeters wide by two millimeters high. And then it's going into the three millimeter holes. There's four of them inside. So with this RBA base, you get you get good airflow. It's very RBA esque. You know, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, they said with this base on here, it's equal to 8.65 airflow delivery. So what they're doing is they're equating all the airflow openings going through the chimney, and it equates to about 8.65 millimeters of airflow. Um, the inside of the chimney is huge on this thing. I think it's huge. It's eight and a half millimeters. So that's where they're getting. You know, I think that's kind of weird that the airflow delivery is 8.65, but the chimney size is only 8.5. So you think the airflow would be less than the chimney diameter. But I'm sure length has something to do with that equation too. Um, with the extras, you get the extra top fill plug, extra drip tip O-ring, extra O-ring for the airflow control on the bottom, which is nice. Like I said, you get one extra screw, you get three O-ring colors. I ran these clear ones, and you can tell one's pretty clear and one's yellow. And I've been running these since I got them, so I'm actually gonna take them off. I'm gonna put the blue ones on next. We'll work our way up here. I'll again halfway assemble this without the glass. It can be a pain in the butt, man. When you get when you get these O-rings on here, the seals, and put the glass on, it's hard to line up. But thank God it's top airflow, because if it was bottom airflow, it would be a, or top fill. If it was bottom fill, it'd be a pain in the butt. Here's your little nipple, your two holes. One's for air, one's for juice. So when you're putting juice in it, it will accept the juice you're trying to put in it because of airflow. And then you have your little cap here. It says Zephyrus. It's engraved in there pretty nice. I'm totally off camera, aren't I? Just jibber jabbering away. Man, my lights are almost too bright for this. I need to tone them down. This screw's on top. I'll put it all together here in just a minute. Let's take this top part off. The drip tip, I'm not a fan of this top one. I like the, the height of it, but the diameter's small. And that uh, rifling, the, the swirling, they have milled in there. It does nothing. If someone can scientifically prove that that does something, I'll eat this, okay? If someone can prove to me that that actually does something to my vapor, swirls it, cools it down, whatever it does, and if you can prove it to me, I'll eat this drip tip. Just letting you guys know that. And uh, I actually like running this. I like this uh, this drip tip here with the heat sink. I've, I ran this all by itself just on top of my um, my velocity and really like that. Um, I just now switched over to the big tip on the velocity, but um, I'm gonna show you guys how I wick this here. Once I get it wicked up, 
then we'll go back out. Let me get it all ready here. With these factory coils, I found something very interesting and um, I guess my wife threw my other one away or maybe I did. I was wanting to tear this apart. But these coils are a very unique design. You know, you can see two horizontal dual coils. I kind of don't like how the airflow is going right through the middle. I wish there was a channel around the outside of that coil so the air could go on both sides. But you have two big wicking holes on both sides, which is adequate. And down inside there, there is a ceramic base. So the coils actually sit into a ceramic base, which is very nice I, I really like the way this thing's set up and I am going to figure out I know Mark destroyed his when he took it apart like the things press fit in there I mean it, this is a hefty coil it's built nice it's all stainless steel you know for I don't know how they're producing these you know they're not real cheap but I mean hell you almost got an RDA here without a top cap and a 510 pin you know for the hefty and for the heftiness and the materials they're using it's nice now this whole tank put together is only 45 millimeters tall without the drip tips which is nice I mean when you look at this base with the o-rings on it and the glass I mean that's got to be one of the smallest bases there is for sub ohm tanks you know it kind of reminds me of the old like K funds or goblin bases that's real small and just got one you know two air holes and real small and I like that design I don't like the really thick bases preferably you know that's not really my it's not really my thing but all right I'm gonna put up all these extras I'm gonna get all this stuff put up and uh, let me get my cotton out and I'll show you guys how I wick it all right guys first thing I'm gonna do is take some Japanese cotton and the strip and I'm basically gonna cut the cotton about twice as wide as my coil. Does that make sense? That's two millimeter. So I cut it about four millimeters wide. And then what I do is I usually split it in the middle. This is what I do for the Zephyrus, not for everything. I've just found that with the Zephyrus, this works better. And I find the middle. I take one piece, kind of normal fare here. And I spin it and I put it through my coil. Boom. All right. And then we'll cut the other side off. Don't need that much cotton with this thing at all. I mean, one one strip does it with this thing. Try to get the pieces that I rolled with the oils on my hand. Try to get that through. It's not. That one's pretty tight. This one's not super tight. I'll fluff it up a little bit. Pull it through. Here we go. I see what's going on. My cotton's coming apart. There we go. Good, good, good. All right, so I want to get them fluffed up, get them back to where they're kind of laying flat. All right. And then what I'm going to look at my channels. <clears throat> I'm going to take my little scissors, and I want them to be flat out from this channel. All right? I'm not used to building on this deck either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it at an angle. Instead of straight, we'll cut it at an angle. And that way, I'll show you what that does. In case you guys don't know. Now, when I push it down, I got all this crap in my hand. Now when I push it down, I have a point. See, I have a point there, and then I have all this extra fluff up top. So that fluff up top will catch the coil, or catch the extra juice, and this right here will help it wick a little bit. And that's actually too much. I mean, it's ridiculous. You don't need much cotton in this thing at all. End up wasting more cotton trying to get it in there. But I noticed with the angle it works better, because the chimney, there isn't much of a chimney in this thing, and if you just pack it full of cotton, it's not going to work good. All right, so they're all cut at angles here. Just little ones, nothing major. That one actually needs trimmed off just a hair. And I'm just looking at them dry here first to see how, how they look. That one needs trimmed just a hair. And that side needs trimmed just a little bit. Because the thing with cotton is, man, it don't look like much until juice gets on it. When juice gets on it, then it just expands and gets huge. So uh, cotton can be a tricky thing. On these RTAs, let me put a little juice on there. Juiced up. So I'll try to take that point, and I just want to touch that channel. I don't want to pack it, I just want to touch. And this up top here, fluff up a little bit. Does that make sense? You guys follow me? So touch here, and I'm going to take my tip, and I'm going to fluff some of this up. Some of it down, some of it up. 
actually have some extra right there inside let's fluff that up a little bit flatten this out i don't want it fluffy in there i want to flatten it down that channel so about 25 percent of it's cotton in that channel to catch some excess juice and about 75 percent of it's going to pass by that tip and go up to the fluffy part does that make sense and then once i get them all kind of where i want them i'll look at it from the top view and what my main thing i'm looking for here is that this juice can get up this channel so i want to make sure that i have some cotton there some cotton up I don't want it in the threads. I'm not packing it as much as it, it looks like I am. Just setting it there. Okay. It's not on my air holes. That one's touching just a little bit. Let's push that back. And let's double check this side. And if you have something small like a piece of canthal, once you get your chimney on, you can always go in there and, and kind of clean them air holes out. So I got a little bit too much cotton, so I'm going to pull this up to the top. So let's put the chimney on and see how she looks. I might, I might have a little bit too much on that one side. Let's peek at it again. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Looked like it was pulling my cotton, but the part that I had pushed up was actually going around. I know I'm doing this off camera, but sorry. And um, some of that I pushed up. You're not going to be able to see it with my camera, but some of it I pushed up started to go towards, so towards the threads. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to find that channel and push down just a little bit. So I made a little, little pocket. Damn it, I wish my light was better. So I can see down in there. I don't have my flashlight on me. But all I'm doing is finding the point of this pointer. And I'm finding that channel and pushing it down. Because once that juice, once I fill it up and that juice hits that channel, it's going to fluff that cotton up. So, hopefully that helps somebody. We'll put this tank back together here. One more thing I want to do since I got my chimney on. Right before I put it on my mod, I want to throw it, see what the resistance is. It should be about 0.16. But we'll see. It's been a while since I've checked it. All right, 0.21. Now, if it was a 0.32, which would be double my 0.16, I would think uh, something shorten out. But a 0.2, it probably went up. I've, I've heated them up and cleaned them, and I actually spaced some of the coils out, so I'd be over the airflow a little bit better. Put a little bit of spitty poo on there. Now putting this together, it's kind of hard. Try to catch that first thread. Here we go. Be careful, man. These son of a bitches right here will cut you when that airflow rings off there. Airflow control rings off there. Let me get it tightened up. Actually, I'm going to take this top cap off because I'm afraid if I get it too tight, I'm not going to be able to get that top cap off. All right, there we go. Airflow control ring back on. And it does have an indention right there, so it only goes one way. So it's flat right there dented there and that indention goes for the o-ring i bet half this video hasn't even been in focus so all right let's fill it up anytime you fill up a top flow always or top fill always shut off your airflow it makes life so much easier this is 100 percent vg this shit is thick all right we'll call that good I don't need to fill it up all the way because I'm probably going to change my juice. And with this chimney being six millimeters, I mean, your nipple does fall down in there. But if you get a pair of tweezers or something, but you're not always going to have a pair of tweezers on you. It's not the biggest deal in the world. It does get slippery. Usually I grab it and put it in my mouth. And that way I'm cleaning the excess juice off of it while it's in my mouth. And I know I won't lose it if it's in there. So, all right, put the top cap on. All right, let's see if this bitch will leak. I don't, I don't see any air holes or anything yet. It's kind of tilted on its side. No air holes. Nothing's pouring out the bottom. Hmm. Well, that's a Zephyrus. Let's uh, let's get back up from down and dirty, and we'll see. We'll see how she vapes. We'll sit here and let it set for a second. And get them. Get them. Uh, wigs make sure everything's going good so I'll see you in a second hey real quick I want to show you guys the difference um, hang on Do so. all right I'll show you the difference in height between it and the crown tank so you can tell the Zephyrus because that bottom man look how much shorter the Zephyrus base is and then even the top is shorter that's a I think that's that's awesome for the Zephyrus I, I like this thing a lot man I just want to show you guys that all right Peace. What's up guys? Alright, I put the Zephyrus on my M80 and um, 
so I can crank up the watts a little bit. I usually run it on a mechanical mod that's why it's so low, but it's reading a 0.18 now. I knew once I heated it up, got some juice on there, it would cool off and the resistance would go down a little bit. But I wish they were still in there. I had a gang of bubbles in there because I was just fucking chaining it. This is Max VG. This stuff is super thick too. So I'm going to sit here and chain on it for a second and probably do the chipmunk voice. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do -do -do. I'm at 53 watts at 0.18. So in case you guys are wondering. Maybe you can see, oh, not on that side so much. You can see all them bubbles coming up, man. They're starting to come about. Starting to build up. Sorry my up close section isn't that good. Um, I need a better camera. But I have good news. The job I've been applying for for the last six months finally called me in for my last interview. I had an initial interview. I had to take a drug screen and a bunch of stuff. And I got to go back in Tuesday for my other job. Uh, for my, hopefully my start job interview. But I have to go in and talk to the district manager and everything. But it's a... It's a good job. It's something I've, I've been in the industry for about 12 years, but that isn't going to stop me. I'm going to have an update video right after I film this on my wire and um, the whole deal with the stainless steel wire, the pre-made coils and all that, and a few other deals I got going on, but I got to go back to work to kind of fund it. So I'll be funding it and uh, I'll explain that in the other video. But anyway, let's go back to chaining. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> Just started to get at least a little bit of a, a hit. You see my, my bubbles coming out. I see one side's bubbling up, juicing real good, and the other side's not doing as good. But with the Zephyrus, you can take the drip tip off and see right down into your coils. So guess what? You know, this isn't what I normally do, but I need to go in there and pick that one side up just, just a hair with the cotton. This thing is so, t it's, it's a little touchy, you know. If you're not somebody that knows how to mess with cotton and mess with coils, I would say not get this one for the RBA. Um, the holes that trap your leads are about one millimeter. I haven't had any issues with it pinching or breaking my leads off or anything. Um, they're about one millimeter, but they're staggered. So you got a coil in this way, flip it to a center build, push it over. Works good. I mean, as, as far as building on it, and it working with the RBA, I love it. The pre-made coils are nice. Um, they're not my preferred. The crown tank has ruined me. It's <laughs> nothing compares to the crown tank in my eyes. So, but anyways, that's that's life. You know, there's always something bigger and better that comes along. But you know, my Zephyrus, it's a shorter tank. I feel like it could take. I feel like it's built really good. I feel like it could take a hit. You know, I've dropped it a few times, never got a scratch on it. This is the way I run the drip tip just with the heat sink if not with one of my other drip tips where's my black one at? i don't know where i put it it was up on my desk somewhere but you know it's it's been really good um there was one time that i had it leak a little bit because i left it on its side like this overnight and rtas don't like this because as long as it catches an air through the airflow now i might sit on its side good with the airflow shut um you know i didn't try that per se but I just left it up sometimes it was like that and never leaked as long as your juice isn't going past that air flow on the base you should be good you know that's just my experiences with it oh yeah good flavor it's I mean I might have talked what there maybe 30 seconds 60 seconds something like that and the, the juice is all whipped right back All right, let's turn up the power on this a little bit. I was at 53. Let's go up to 66. That's about a mech mod with voltage drop. It's about 3637. It's warm. That's good. Sitting here seeing how many drips are coming up. Yeah, the bubbles are only really coming up good on that one side. So that's a good way to tell if you guys are wondering if you're if you're having wicking issues. Chain it. If you start to get, you know, you're not getting full-on flavor, stop and look and see where your bubbles are coming out of. So I have full-on bubbles coming out on one side, which it'll still go up to the cotton and wick through. Um, you know, it's not necessarily saying that your cotton on the other side isn't wet. It's just not sending big bubbles up. It can wick without sending huge bubbles up. I've, I've noticed. I don't know if anybody disagrees with that or not, but... Still flavor, man. I was really afraid of this thing not being able to keep up with wicking. <laughs> 
especially with low low ohms, high, high wattage, high voltage, regular voltage, whatever you want to call it. I was afraid this thing you'd get like four good hits and then it would you'd have to wait on it. But it's it's not the case. Um, with 80-20, it's perfect. Uh, with 100% VG, you might have to wait a minute on it. But you know that's 100% VG. You're gonna have the the flavor or the juice I'm using only has two. Um, two flavors for the profile so there's not that much room for it to get diluted any I mean it's about as thick as VG is gonna get and it's low nicotine so it's all basically VG in there so it's it's thick it's good man hey I appreciate you guys watching uh, if you guys need to get a hold of me I'm gonna put the video up with all my information about the wire, the pre-made coils, and kind of uh, how that's going to start off with the Kickstarter. Not a Kickstarter program, but how I'm going to kick it off and how I'm going to uh, try to take on the wire, the packaging, the shipping, and everything myself. And then when I go to work, my wife has graciously said she's going to help me out. And um, basically what I'm going to do is just pre-make up a bunch of 100 foot. I'm thinking I'm going to do 30 foot. I'm going to sell 30 foot and 100 foot. It's the wrong video for this. I'll put up another video and explain all that. All right, guys. So, regular vape dude, I'm out. Thanks for watching. Peace and chicken grease. Catch you next time.